Stealth can simply be defined as the ability to hide from the enemy. Especially combat aviation perspective, stealth aircraft are designed to possess extremely low observability in terms of radar cross-section, infrared signature, and visual identification which helps in avoiding detection by enemies' active and passive sensors. In modern era stealth aircraft are very necessary especially in the presence of advanced anti-aircraft system, therefore stealth aircraft are responsible to engage and destroy high-value targets to clear the path for friendly forces. But is there possibility to counter the stealth fighter? Because a stealth fighter was shoot down during an operation. What was actually happen? Why that stealth aircraft was shoot down, or was there any other reason behind that event? The F-117A Nighthawk had been the world's first operational aircraft designed to exploit low observable stealth technology. This precision strike aircraft penetrated high threat airspace and used laser guided weapons against critical targets. The first F 117A was delivered in 1982, and the last delivery was in the summer of 1990. It was practically tested during Operation Desert Storm in 1991. F-117AS flew approximately 1,300 sorties and scored direct hits on 1,600 high-value targets in Iraq. It was the only US or coalition aircraft to strike targets in downtown Baghdad. Meanwhile Yugoslavia war started in 1991, this war often described as Europe's deadliest armed conflict after World War II. Yugoslavia war were marked by many large-scale war crimes, like genocide, ethnic cleansing, mass wartime rape and many other crimes against humanity by Serbian forces. Therefore, NATO decided to interfere for stop genocide and started operation against Serbs. The marvelous achievement of F-177 in Operation Desert Storm, USA decided to deploy F-117 against Serbs. So in 1999, 24 F-117AS deployed to Aviano Air Base Italy, and Spandulum AB Germany, to support NATO's Operation Allied Force. The aircraft led the first Allied air strike against Yugoslavia on 24 March 1999. After having huge loss by airstrike, the Serbs were leaning every available advantage they could to accomplish a shoot-down of American aircraft. They knew war was not a popular option for the US civilian population, and it was perceived that if they could shoot down some American aircraft, they could turn public opinion against the air war. That's why after three days of first strike, on March 27, one F-117A was lost during a mission. A question mark were raised, how Serbs able to shoot down an F-117 stealth aircraft, or was there any other reason for that event? But soon, it was founded that Serb has shoot down F-117 with S-125 surface-to-air missile system. Serb just not only become able to shoot down an advanced aircraft with S-125, but also there was a brilliant planning involved. In fact, there was mistake for the routes used by the F-117s during the shoot down, had been flown previously multiple times. This contrary to the F-117 operations in the 91 war, where they flew into Baghdad never repeating the same inbound track consecutively. Perhaps, this was due to overconfidence in their equipment and air superiority. It was standard operating procedure for all Allied air strike missions to be accompanied by electronic warfare aircraft EA-6B prowlers. These aircraft flew with strike missions to detect, jam, and destroy enemy radar installations. It was difficult for the Yugoslavian anti-air forces to operating their radars and get target quality tracks on even conventional military aircraft. For counter it, Serbs worked diligently to set up anti-air ambushes for NATO aircraft, particularly hunting for the f 117 as Unfortunately, on the day Vega 31 would be taken out of the sky, the prowlers were grounded due to weather. The decision was made for the F-117s to fly their strike mission without any support. Worse yet, the Yugoslavian anti-air forces knew that the prowlers were grounded, and knew that the F-117s were going to fly a strike mission anyway. Because the Serbs had spotters and human intelligence assets in Italy, 
where the strike missions were flying from. They had also compromised NATO communications in the area. In short, the NATO forces had a massive failure in operation security that was feeding valuable data to the enemy. Important thing that the F-117A is a very lean aircraft, and it has no radar of its own. When flying for penetration all of its antennas are retracted. It had a single system that could function as a radar warning receiver, but the antennas are not exposed during a strike mission. As such it has no way of detecting search and track radar on its own. Simply put, operating alone, it is effectively blind. For these ambushes they employed two radar systems. First the P-18 Spoon Rest D Early Warning Radar. This radar is a Soviet Union radar system that operates in the VHF frequency. Typical it can detect a fighter aircraft out to 200 nautical miles. The Serbs discovered that by setting it to its absolute lowest frequency, and thus largest bandwidth, they could detect the F-117 as. However, at these settings the radar cannot provide very good information on the F-117s, and the early warning radar could only detect them wiring 15 miles. This is a very poor detection range indeed, however if you just so happen to know the route your enemy is flying, it is enough to let you know when they are getting within range of your other systems. Even when the P-18 is operating at optimal performance against a conventional aircraft, it can still not produce a precision track of a quality to guide a weapon on anything more than a kilometer or so away. That is why these systems are considered early warning radar, they are not meant to guide weapons. This brings us to the next system the Serbs used. For their anti-aircraft weapon system, they had the S-125, or SA-3 Goa to NATO. The S-125 had three radar systems, the P-15 flat face, SN-125 low blow and PRV-11 side net. SN-125 was the fire control radar, intended to guide the missiles onto their targets. This had two modes of operation for detecting aircraft, essential two different radar bands. Nominal it could detect and track a fighter aircraft between 25 to 50 miles out, depending on the mode of operation and conditions. The PRV-11 was used as a height finder to get an accurate read on a target's altitude. All these radars were paired with a quad missile launcher carrying the V-600 missile. A two-stage solid fueled surface-to-air missile with a max range of about 15 miles, and a minimum engagement range of a little more than a mile. The Serb had attempted to set up ambushes in this way for the F-117s two times previous to the actual shootdown. They would get an indication of a pending strike mission, and move their missile batteries into place to intercept the suspected routes. The P-18 would be able to detect the F-117 as when they got within 15 miles, as was mentioned before. Even with the prowlers flying, the P-18 did not register on their systems as a radar system when operating at their lowest frequency. On the day of the shootdown, as has been mentioned, the Serbs got intelligence that the F-117s would be flying a strike mission without the support of the prowlers. Being well drilled in setting up these ambushes, they positioned their S-125 missile system into position on the F-117's suspected approach. The P-18 radar detected the F-117 as when they were about 15 miles out. The Serbs activated SN-125 radar and detected nothing. Meanwhile, aboard Vega 31 the Air Force pilot was preparing to drop his ordnance. His weapon bay doors opened, exposing his very radar reflective bomb bay interior. The SN-125 radar detected the F-117A 5 miles distant. That strike mission had three F-117s in it, and they only were able to target one of them. This reinforces the fact that they were only able to do so because at that time Vega 31's weapons bays were open. The Serbs fired at least two missiles at Vega 31. The F-117A had no indication it was being painted by a targeting radar, but the pilot did visually acquire two missiles that were launched against him. The first missile flew right by the aircraft, passing it overhead. The missile's passing buffeted the stealth fighter but it did not detonate, its proximity trigger likely not detecting the F-117 to initiate detonation. 
The second missile that approached also failed to hit the F-117, but it did detonate in close proximity. The F-117 took blast and fragment damage, flight control was lost, and the pilot was forced to eject. The pilot ejected safely and was rescued by US Air Force PJs conducting search and rescued. In 2020, an F-117A pilot during an interview in which he also reminded all that the F-117A was low observable, not invisible, stated that his wingman's F-117A had been damaged by a Yugoslav surface-to-air missile. Some reports suggest that this second incident was also committed by the 3rd Battery of the 250th Air Defense Missile Brigade, the same SAM battery that shot down the first F-117. The F-117 Nighthawk was officially retired after 27 years of serving the American Air Force, primarily due to the fielding of the F-22 Raptor. Despite the type's official retirement, a portion of the fleet has been kept in airworthy condition, and Nighthawks have been observed flying since 2009.